Thanks so much for tuning in the trade setup with me, Neeraj Shah. Now, it's an interesting, did you know, it's, it's happened a, f a couple of weeks ago, but did you know that in September, a private crew of four astronauts flew 1,400 kilometers, which is 870 miles, above the Earth's surface, the farthest that humans have traveled in space since the moon missions. And this was a private crew, of course. This was done, um, you know, it was a journey conducted in a SpaceX capsule, its first commercial spacewalk. I mean, quite stunning, really, all the feats that, in, that, 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 that the world and the humankind is, um, you know, achieving, if you will. Nevertheless, uh, back to markets. And what about the global news flow? I think this is the geopolitical news flow, if you will, but US and France are set to offer a truce plan to avert the war in Lebanon. And Zelensky has accused China of pushing peace while aiding Russia's war. A couple of interesting geopolitical news bits and headlines that I found. But otherwise, the markets were, have been quiet. I mean, US markets, uh, if you see, they had a quiet kind of a day yesterday. At least the Nasdaq did. Dow was about 0.7% lower. But Dow futures marginally in the green. I think if you look at across the Asian sphere, largely a tick of green, if you will. I think tech is what is pushing Asian markets higher. Um, I would reckon almost everything which has got that tech flavor should be doing okay. And Indian markets uh, very likely could do well yet again in the session today. Remember, um, if you will, that we had a flattish day yesterday, yes, but we ended, or rather a, a weak market breath, yes, but we ended very well. I mean, the intraday of the Nifty, if you, for example, if you see, look at this, a very, very quiet day throughout. But then this spy. Quite interesting what happened yesterday. So are the markets at heady levels? You would argue that, yes, the markets are at heady levels, and therefore uh, caution is advised on, uh, sorry, not caution, uh, caution is not advised on fresh longs, fresh leverage longs. I think we missed the term leverage. What I mean to say, viewers, that if you are not in the market already, into your cash positions, etc., and if you're taking leverage positions, then there, therein lies a problem. So you've got to be careful with leverage positions being taken. Non-leverage should be okay even now, I believe. Yes, we might be edging on the greed zone, um, but issue only for leverage, not for not leverage. So therefore, that's the first point that I want to make. Uh, it's, I, I think I, I borrowed this from a dollar uh, capital conference note, and they say that the pushback that they got from people who are, or push, pushback that was gotten from people who were bullish is that the market breadth is now so diverse that it's pretty easy to avoid overpriced pockets rather than being forced to deploy. Now, what, what do people mean by this? That it's not that if you want to buy manufacturing, you have to buy into expensive pockets like defense, for example, if you believe defense is expensive, or railways, if you believe railways is expensive. Because there is enough array of pockets out there, so nobody's forcing you. If you're a basket investor who has to put in 30% into banks, for example, you're not being forced to put into all kind of expensive banks. There are inexpensive banks out there too. So there's enough breadth out there in the Indian markets right now for people to pick and choose, even if you're a large investor and not just a retail investor, so bear that in mind. Mind. Um, pharma looks like it'll be under pressure today. So, and I'll tell you why in just moments from now. But just before that, a couple of pricing alerts that I want to bring out, just to show that a lot of people are getting it wrong. SpiceJet. When the QIP was announced, uh, the uh, fundraise was announced, the stock was northwards of 75. People were chasing the stock in seven trading sessions. The stock has come down. 19.8%. With a 5.5% fall yesterday, it is now very close to or nearly at the price at which the QIP investors put in money. So if you thought that QIP investors had an edge, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't because from 78, which is when the announcement happened, look at what the stock has done. So there is clearly pressure in select pockets, especially which have run up too fast too soon, and which is why I said at the first point that if you have a leverage long, you should be careful. If you don't have a leverage long, it's fine. Imagine if you did the leverage long at that price then you're paying interest um, and suffering losses. If you have a cash position, you might still be a bit more uh, okay with, with a purchase in SpiceJet if you believe that the overall game plan is positive. But if you're a leverage long, it could have been an issue. IPO subscriptions are stunning. Manba Finance subscribed 224 times on day three. KRNT exchanges the first day got subscribed 24 times. But Manba, the second best subscribed uh, IPO, in FY25, quite stunning, or calendar year 24 as well, maybe. The second best uh, subscribed IPO. So quite stunning, really. And remember, these stocks are getting some very good listing days gains as well. So be mindful of that. Stocks to watch in the session today. 
pharma companies. India's apex drug regulatory body, a CDSO, has flagged 53 drug samples for failing to meet quality standards. Companies like Sun Pharma, Glenmark Pharma, Torrent Pharma have all been implicated. Now, this is a very big consumer story, viewers, because drugs that you and me are having have failed to meet quality standards. This is worrying. This is seriously worrying. But there is also a market's angle to this, which is what I'm bringing out now. So Torrent Pharma, the drug is Shellcal. It accounted for 10% of Q1 FY25. Ignore this FY25, it's Q1 FY25. But it accounted for 10% in Q1 FY25. Very likely that it may have continued to do the same. So it's a large drug for Torrent Pharma and therefore could have a meaningful implication. Alchem Labs, Pandy is the name of the drug, accounted for 4.4% 4 in FY24. For Sun Pharma, Pantosid, so many people have this, accounted for 5.9% in FY24. Glenmark Pharma, Telma, 8.7% in FY24. The only caveat is in Glenmark, Telma has 16 drugs. One of those has been found. The remaining 15 are okay. So in Glenmark's case, it's not 8.7% in total. Remember that? Just wanted to make that clarification. Uh, I think we haven't put out the alert because I wanted to put out that alert. Somehow. Okay, we have. Telma has 16 brands. One of those brands has been implicated, not all. So that 8.7% is not in Toto, by the way. It's all for, 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 for a particular, uh, for 8.7% is total, but one of those Telma brands has been implicated. So the impact will not be 8.7%, just bear that in mind. But all of these should react and logically should react from a consumption perspective as well should react. This is shocking really for me. But yep, uh, be that as it may, um, this would be important. Five star business, holders look to offload about nine. 18.2% stake via block deal at 768 per share. The current price 808. Suffice to say, this will be under pressure. Ask Automotive promoter to sell about 6.05% stake via an OFS. The floor price is 433. So therefore, very likely that this one too could be under pressure. It's not as large as 19% stake or as the 13% shares which were sold by Ease My Trip planners yesterday. But 6% is large too. 433 lower than the 467 price, very likely could see a bit of a reaction too. Vedanta could see a positive reaction. The board is uh, uh, set to consider the fourth interim dividend on October 8th. So watch out for this one. Could have a positive move here for Vedanta as well. PB Fintech is interesting. The company's clarified that it has not decided yet on entering the healthcare space. The stock was down yesterday, maybe because of this announcement. I missed as to why PB Fintech was down yesterday. It could have been because of this, I don't know. But if it was because of this, then they've clarified that they are not entering. Let's see if there's a bit of a, uh, a, a reversal of fortunes, if you will, for PB Fintech. Adani Green could be interesting with standard disclosures that the Adani Group owns NDTV. But promoter group entities, two promoter group entities, cumulatively have acquired 2.96% stake in the company. So watch out for this one, could be active as well. Easy Trip Planners, this is an interesting one, right? I mentioned this yesterday in the trade setup. Uh, now we know that promoters actually went out and sold 13.9% stake in the company yesterday. It's a large stake sale. And cumulatively, I think, since FY24, the promoters have sold 24%. I think the question to ask really is, and we will pose these questions to the promoters, why is it that such large stake sales are happening uh, if indeed the plans of the company are so robust? I mean, they've sold 24% stake in the company since FY24. I know a lot of promoters are selling and in cashing, but this is very large stake sales. So, interesting, yes. Uh, I mean, maybe there's a logical reason which the promoter should come up and answer is the point I'm making. But the market didn't like what happened yesterday, by the way. 16% downtick. Uh, it's it's uh, time for promoters to give some answers. KPR Mill, SBI Mutual Fund bought about 97 lakh shares, 2.84% at 925 rupees. Watch out for this one. And some brokerage calls. Cities wanted a note on Gale, a buy with a target price of 260. They've opened a positive catalyst watch. They see upside to transmission tariffs. Gas being brought under GST is not yet priced in. And the restructuring of CGD investments not priced in fully as well. Let's see if there's a bit of a reaction to Gale. Let's see if there's a bit of a reaction to Trent. Initiating, City is initiated at a buy, target price of 9250. They say the higher revenue CAGR versus India's listed retail companies. The jump in F FY25 estimates is defying weak consumer sentiment. So they are doing that despite weak consumer sentiment as well. And City believes that the 20% valuation premium are justified given strong revenue EBITDA CAGRs of 41% and 44%. Uh, uh, their pecking order is Trent, Jubilant Foodworks, Kalyan Dwellers, and Devyani International, in case this helps.
Watch out, Trent makes an entry into the index as well. The expectation was that flows will continue to 27th September and then maybe a cool off. We saw a bit of a cool off yesterday. Let's see if this stays further or does City not spur the stock, remains to be seen. Last but not the least, UBS on Hero Moto. They've maintained a sell with a target price of 3350. Remember, it's maintained a sell, it's not a fresh sell. They've maintained the sell. But they say that the stock is trading now at FY20, 26 times FY26 FY P multiples, which is more than three standard deviations higher than the five-year historical average. Well, something to take note of. The, the insubstantial retail market share loss despite the launches and the festive strength in the past has not aided in full year performances. So, well, UBS finds various reasons, multiple reasons why the stock should be sold. Watch out for this one. Could be an active name today on the downside. Viewers, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the trade setup. Have a great day ahead.